Hello and welcome to the Enduro World Series show, the show that brings you the inside line on the very best action from all the EWS racing. We're here at the base of the Hope Pyrenees in the small ski village of Loudonville at the Pyrenees Bike Festival for the final race of the 2022 season. High stakes, injuries and rapidly declining weather. It really has it all to play for. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what it takes to win an EWS overall title. This year, the Enduro World Series season has offered riders eight opportunities to win a race. You win the race and you're the winner on that day, an impressive achievement in itself. To win the overall series, on the other hand, well, that's a whole other ball game. By the end of the 2022 season, a racer will have tackled 44 stages, descended 19,253 metres and been against the clock for over 124 kilometres of trail, usually for it all to come down to a matter of points at the final race. So how do you actually become an overall champion? Consistency? talent, experience, maybe even a bit of luck. I think it's uh, consistency, uh, the key being able to understand that uh, even without winning each race, you can still win the title. So I think yeah, it's to accept looking at the overall more than uh, to winning races. Battling in a multitude of weather conditions, fending off mechanicals and riding through adversity is all part of being consistent and staying at the sharp end of racing. In the women's field, Isabel Corderier ran away with the show, taking half the wins of the 2022 season. Coming into Ludenville, the Lapierre Zip Collective rider had a comfortable 570 points over Morgan Schaar. The men's field saw two riders edge away from the competition. Leading in the finale of the year, both Jesse Melamed and Richie Root had won three races each, with Jesse only missing the podium at one race, compared to Richie's three missed podiums. Melamed edged forward by 495 points. I've had a lot of good races this year, and I've had two to three bad ones, and that's what's really killed my chances. The deciding round wouldn't be a finale though without some drama. Huge crashes leading to injuries at previous rounds for both of the top spot contenders has meant that the race here in Ludenville is set to be full of fireworks with it all to play for. It really has been an explosive season filled with drama, chaos and tight battles. One person that's really been through the highs and lows of racing with an overall series win last year followed up with lingering injuries and a slow start to this year is the Canyon Collective rider, Jack Moyer. We snuck in behind the scenes with the Aussie rider to see what goes into a race weekend and more importantly, just what happens in Kev's kitchen. I'm Jack Moyer, I ride for the Canyon Collective and what I like to do for fun. <laughs> Best teammates ever, Party Boy and Mr. Bomber. The Party Boy loves to dance. And Mr. Bomber, he is a reptile, aka a lizard man. He'll sit in the sun all day. We have a we have a good time. <laughs> I crashed uh, last Sunday in Crans Montana, last stage, and uh, I have a bit conclusion. Try to help uh, all the stuff, all the riders, massage, uh, coaching, uh, everything uh, I can do. To the top, let's go. Ryan, boom, boom. Yeah, that's party boy drive, June buggy drive. And I'm like walking around and discussing with each other, and he's like, I saw it. Ciao, hello, ciao, hello, we the top ten, UGK to make it way not play. Yeah, we got a new track here. Traffic like we go and know that. Give us a pep talk, Mr. Bomba. Now, if you want, you can do warm up. You like that? You yeah. like that? I like that chair. Do warm up. Hey, listen to the car. You can do <laughs> this is the party way, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, coach. Yeah, bro. Cheers, coach. Yeah, boy. Send it. See you. You. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Charles look good again. Um, might be a bit wet on the weekend for racing, so we haven't had a mudder all year. Could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what is that, bro? Where do you reckon, Party Boy? Is that the most Euro thing you've seen today or this year? This year, this is forbidden. Yeah, this is forbidden. <laughs> That's illegal in our pits. I wanted to make a YouTube channel for a couple of years. Me, Mr. Bomber, Party Boy, and whatever our other characters come riding with us. I've been filming, editing, everything. It's a big job. Yeah, I don't, I don't mess around. And I've already edited my video from today. Yeah, bro, that oh, thing yeah. is hot. <laughs> that thing is straight flames, bro. <laughs> Tracks are sick, so yeah. I'm excited to get loose on those. Get dressed, go up, do a cheeky warm up. Coach will be up there. Um, dance moves, squats, <laughs> leg swing. I'm be there, no toy. Okay. Well, I swung off it today and it didn't work out, like I said. So maybe I can't be swinging that hard. I actually did hear Richie talking about that section before I started. Because he said- The one little rock drops a bit rough after. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't think it was just gonna be death roots to nothing. Mr. Legs. Either or. No, Mr. Legs. Uh, no more Kev. What's wrong with Kev? No, Kev? you don't. It's not possible to tune. Yeah, you you are Lizard Man and Mr. Bomba. <laughs> like, you've, you're the king of having two names. You is like Mr. Legs and Jack Moore. Kev's Kitchen, you know, like cooking up in Kev's Kitchen. Salmon. Yeah. We have crown fresh. Oh, <laughs> crown fresh. And potato like for the puree. We don't have a very good kitchen here, so haven't been doing much. But if we're just cruising, training camp or something, me and Party Boy like mixing it up. Yeah, we're going to fresh yesterday, but thank you. Who's Ben? My mechanic, he's a mad dog. Ben 10, wheels. Nah, he's super dog, really good with everything. Shout out to my boy, Ben. Fun, but I told myself I wasn't gonna crash that. I just crashed three times on the first. Well, it was off my bike at three points. was to not crash today but that did not work out and pretty disappointing I so I didn't feel like I was riding that fast it was just so tricky yeah I kind of cooked that but ended up in third and fourth overall so year done we'll let loose have a few cheeky ones with the with the crew hey party boy give us an entry uh, ending sorry to the video Great to see last year's series champion finding his form towards the end of this one. Now it is time to hand you over to my esteemed colleague known across the world for his soothing tones and gentle manner. 
Josh Carlson of the Giant Factory Off-Road Team is here to talk us through how the final EWS of 2022 unfolded. This is what went down at EWS Ludenville. Thanks, Rick. What a day to finish out the 2022 Enduro World Series here in Ludenville. We've had a couple of fantastic performances. Morgan Shah come through with the number one place, and she's won the last round of the season. Fellow Frenchman Alex Rideau finished with his first ever EWS victory here in Ludenville in some of the most challenging conditions we've seen all year. Isabel Coderia wrapped up the 2022 World Championship along with Jesse Melamed. Now, these athletes, they did not have it handed to them. They had to earn their stripes this year. It was a massive battle all the way to the line, and it was theirs to lose but they came through on top. They both won their respective categories and they are now crowned the 2022 Enduro World Series champions. We're joined now with Charlie Murray. You've had a fantastic day, mate. You finished the day in fourth overall with a Queen Stage of victory. How did that feel? Oh, that was amazing, yeah. The Queen Stage victory was the icing on top, you know. Really happy to do that one and just finding that flow where you, you know, it's just almost easy and everything works. What was, the, what was the hardest part today? I mean, it was super treacherous up there. Stage two was claiming bodies left, right and centre. Stage three was the monster, which you won. Do you prefer that long stage or what was the hardest part to, to, to get through today's racing? I think the hardest stages were stage two and the pro stage, stage six as well. Those two stages, two and six, were really difficult. Um, just slippery, roots everywhere yeah. and changing all the time. So we ride it in practice and it was a different track. How different was it? I mean, that was diabolical up there today to see the roots and the lines. Yeah. Compared to practice Friday afternoon, was it a complete change? Yeah, it was. I mean, we are riding up this morning and um, I think it was Eddie or someone said, oh, there's no roots on stage two. <laughs> And, and then I think so it's Eddie's and, fault. And then Richie said, well, there wasn't roots on stage two. Yeah. And we got there, it's just a bit of roots. The dirt was gone. Right, we're up here on stage three. The cowbells are going and the crowd's getting excited. The rides have already had one stage here today. Stage two was diabolically slippery and wet. Rudy, nightmare. I'm relieved I made it down. <laughs> it was completely sketchy. Carnage. Absolutely carnage. It's so slippy and you're just sliding into things and onto lines that you you didn't do in practice. I told myself I wasn't gonna crash that, and I just crashed three times on the first. Well, it was off my bike at three points. Really, really tricky. Worse than yesterday. Broken wheels, broken riders, broken egos. It was all happening on stage two. Stage three looks like it's drying out quite a lot. It's not raining, it's not sunny, but we're not mad about it. So holes are developing, roots are coming out. The changing conditions is gonna be a big factor in today's race here for the final round of the EWS. Longest stage of the weekend here, the Queen stage. So over 800 meters vertical drop from top to bottom. So this is a monster for this weekend. Even if riders do make a mistake, you have gotta push all the way to the bottom and make up for it because there's plenty of time to be made. So speaking of changing conditions, look at this. We got nice, soft, loamy dirt here and a nice big rut forming, but look at all these roots coming into it. These are gonna be diabolical for these riders to navigate. As they come across the hill, they're probably not used to all this high line here. But as they come down the hill, they'll be playing it live, trying to carry good speed into the exit and take advantage of this actually really good dirt. This is delicious, look at it. As it gets slipperier and slipperier up here, Ryder's going to have a big challenge of setting up tyres. As we chatted to Jack yesterday, he's contemplating putting on some spikes for the morning and then in the midday break, he might change some drier tyres. Now with this changing conditions, the roots and rocks are slippery, but the dirt's getting deeper and loamier. So the slippery dirt, spikes might be good in some sections, but it's going to be a compromise in others. So we'll see how they go towards the end of the day, but I reckon spikes this morning, especially for stage two, would have been the hot tip. As the day gets drier, as it gets faster, we'll see the riders going to a more low profile tire, a little bit faster rolling, a little bit more aggressive braking edge as the day dries out. Let's see how the riders got on here at the last round of the Enduro World Series. Conditions were very difficult to read. You never knew if it was going to be slippery or not, but it was kind of wild on some sections, especially the last one. So I was kind of riding a bit too tense, but I'm honestly super happy about my weekend and to finish the season like that. Even on the first stage of the day, the stage two, it was really slippery, muddy. So yeah, the, the rain takes its part on the, on the race and it was good for me, <laughs> as you see. So, no, I, I'm happy with it. I really like when it's muddy and a little bit sketchy. So, yeah, that's good. I rode slow and steady like I did yesterday and 
for some of the stages that were really tricky, that was really good, and some they were it was slower, but that's just all I had to do. I just had to get through this day clean. It was quite hard to predict because in some sections it was riding really well and some other were like hot back and like ice. So yeah, it was a, it took me a bit of time to like get into it, but then after a while I felt like pretty good and had a lot of fun. Uh, stage two was pretty wet and I thought the whole day was going to be like that. And the rest of the day was actually a lot better. And I chose to stay with dry tires just because we weren't sure. And um, <clears throat> I thought I made the wrong call, but I guess I did well on two. And then the rest of the day, like the stages were actually a lot better, like traction wise. So that was good. And Alex Rideau won today on flat pedals. Sam Hill put in a fantastic performance, a vintage Sam Hill performance here. Do you think those flat pedals play to their advantage here with their tricky, slippery corners? I think so. I mean, if, if you're accustomed to riding them, then you're going to be in an advantage. But right. there's also all the pedaling. Like we yeah. had a lot of pedaling in the stages today. Yeah. But then again, if they're hitting corners faster and not having to break, yep. they're going to be not having to pedal coming out of the corners. Yep. So it's a trade-off, but I think definitely, like like what I was saying, you know, stage two, yep. the pro stage, those sort of stages on flat pedals would have been great because I was unclipping more time than I was clipped in. You saw it with Rideau, like he's just com he's committed. Yeah. He's not thinking about anything apart from the corner in front of him, which is yep. how you have to ride today when it's so unpredictable. Jesse Melamed had the championship on the line and we just mentioned it was his to lose and Isabeau. Do you think that would have been playing on their mind today with the wet, with the rocks, with the roots? Do you reckon that was on their mind? I don't know. I was riding around with Jesse today and he was like surprisingly calm. Yeah. I was very impressed because if I was in his position, I would have been freaking out. <laughs> One little slip offline, yeah. you know, you hit your mech into a tree or you hit your tire into a rock and pop it. Yep. He had to finish. So top, easy to do. He had to finish kind of top 67 or yep. top 60, whatever. Yep. And I mean, a flat tire or a broken mech, that could yeah. slip away pretty quickly. Well, look at Sam. It took him out of the race with a flat front tire and Yoon knew he was right up there with a chance for a podium and he mechanical it on the last stage and finished fifth right behind yourself. So it's definitely a stressful scenario. Charlie, huge day. Who were, you who were your two standout performances that you liked for today's last round of the year? Yeah, it's a good question. I think for me, it was a real surprise. Well, not a surprise. I mean, we're in France, we're in the Pyrenees. Yeah. And, but just to see the caliber of French riders in the top 10, right. it was just littered with French flags when you went down the results. True story. And this season, I mean, the, the English speaking riders have been actually- well, the Southern Hemisphere Kiwis. Have been punching above their weight. Yep. And then we come back to France and the Frenchies are just basically, well, they're unbeatable, literally. Yeah. Alex Rideau won. So yeah. the French the French boys were on fire today. Yeah. And in the women, uh, I was really impressed with Noga. Like, yeah. she's had a tough season. She's had some good results and some not so good results. But yeah. today she just, she doesn't give up. And she's yeah. got that grit and it paid off for her in fourth place. And she had a huge battle with, uh, with Melanie. I think Melanie really impressed me today. She's had a big battle. She had a massive crash in Scotland, which may have uh, affected her a little bit more than we, we know. But to come back for a podium in France, it's a huge result. And uh, and in the men's, yourself. I'm really impressed with how you rode uh, and my teammate, Yoon Danu. I mean, he he had a lot of pressure on him this weekend. He's been riding really well the last couple of rounds, but for him to hold it together for, for uh, fifth overall with a slight mechanical and a couple of crashes, I'm pretty happy with how that young fella performed and I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how he goes into next season. Definitely. So he'll be doing big things. Charlie Murray will be doing big things. Hopefully. Ready for a big season. Big season in 2023. Back to you, Rick. Enduro bikes have come a very long way since their inception in the early 2000s. The bikes at the top truly are the pinnacle of the sport, hosting all sorts of prototype parts and secret tech to make the racers as fast as they can be. We caught up with overall series winner Isabel Corderier and Jesse Melamed to go through the finer details of their race machines. Hey, welcome to France. My name is Jesse Melamed, part of the Rocky Mountain Race Face Enduro team. We've got my rock mount altitude here. We're running a size medium. We have a bunch of different things we can change. I got it in the ride nine position three, which kind of shortens it a little bit, adds some travel. I do have an angle set in to shorten it as well, to slacken it out. I don't think there's much uh, secret on here anymore. We got the new rad shock, that's secret. Some special stuff going in there that I can't really talk about, but it's been working out pretty well for me this year. Fox 38 up front. Uh, we got 170 mils in the fork and 160 mils in the shock. Full Shimano group set for this, so Shimano drivetrain. I run the smaller cassette just for like less chain wrap, less chain rattle. Uh, full XGR there, XGR four piston brakes. I run one pad material of each, just running the metallic pads. They had a lot of bite on them, so I'd come into corners and kind of lock up more than I wanted. So we experimented with one metallic, one resin, and I feel like a bit of that's gone away. I lose a little bit of power, I think, but um, it just allows me the way that I corner 
is just kind of like I like to brake check and kind of skid myself around, but not totally lose my back end. So it seemed once I made the change, it was seamless. Um, I had a crash of the last round, unfortunately, and these handguards did a lot to save my hand from anything worse. So uh, those are pretty sweet as well. Uh, Max's tires, Ascari up front, DHI2 in the back is kind of my go-to setup. Hello, my name is Isabeau Cordurier and I'm riding for the Lapierre Zip Collective. And this is my Lapierre Spicy. It's a custom color, but it's a normal size small. I'm running it with some Zip Carbon Wheel, the 3 zero motor. I'm on Hutchinson tires. I'm not running uh, anything crazy as a bike setup, but I'm quite a small and lightweight rider. So suspension tuning for me is very important. And I'm running the RockShox Zeb on front and the all new coil at the back. I run one token and uh, 42 PSI in my fork and my uh, coil shock is a 275. Depending on the race, I might go to an air shock rather than the coil if it's quite physical and I need uh, a lighter bike. And other than that, I'm not changing a lot of stuff. If I get to change a um, very major setting on my bike, it means we are getting to have wild conditions. So for drivetrain, I'm running on the IXS RAM. I'm running a 34 uh, gear at the front and a very big 52 cassette at the back. There are no particular secret bits, but uh, what I like on my uh, frame is that we have a storage underneath to put a tube and it makes it uh, very easier to carry. For me, the key to a fast enduro bike is to have a bike that can endure everything you want to throw at it. So basically, uh, strong casing tires, very big and well-tuned suspension, and I will always say, choose what you know is gonna last the entire race. <laughs> It truly has been an amazing season full of twists and turns. We've crowned two champions that have seen their fair share of trials and tribulations. This is not quite the end of the season, however, for the racers. We do go next to the birthplace of Enduro, Finale Ligure in Italy for the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations, where free riders from each country compete on the same stage at the same time and do battle to be crowned the best country in the world. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you in Italy.